How's it going guys? I swear we'll get to the back armor so fast, but this is actually pretty important. I've been pacing around my garage for like the last hour trying to figure out the fastest way to say this, which I guess is kind of ironic, but basically guys, I'm not really willing to take the risk of editing on the laptop that I'm currently using anymore. I made the mistake of falling for the prank that is Alienware, and a few hours ago the laptop crashed, which, you know, Alienware, it's... It's not very uncommon is what I'm saying. I thought it would be just, you know, the, the normal everyday crash, but I turned it on this time and it wouldn't turn back on. I finally got it at least running so I could edit this video, but I lost enough stuff that I'm gonna be spending a lot of unnecessary time redoing or recovering uh, this stuff. And at this point, I'm just thanking God that this didn't happen after the 21 hours that it took me to edit the last alpha male. If I lost that, that footage or that work, I would, I, I might, I might not live to tell the tale. But that is a very real risk that I could lose that work after editing something for 20 or I've, I've edited videos that have taken 30 hours for me to edit. And it's a risk that I could lose that. And like I said, it's not really a risk that I'm willing to take anymore. So at this point, I do think I need a different laptop. Obviously, I'm not gonna go with Alienware anymore. And like, I'm gonna do the normal stuff like hoodie and t-shirt sale and everything like that. But the main thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about right now is uh, if you use Adblock on my videos, like. I'm not mad. I, I swear I'm not mad. But like seriously, even if just for this month, just to help me out, if you could whitelist my channel or my videos, it would seriously help so much more than you can even imagine. I think it's something like over 60% of uh, people who watch YouTube videos are using Adblock, which used to kind of make me mad, but like I'm, I'm a pretty empathetic guy. I, I understand that not many people really understand how much work uh, goes into these videos, so they kind of feel like, you know, watching a, a 30 second ad is not worth uh, the, you know, a 10 or 15 minute video it's like the ratios are just too too bad uh but yeah just you know do do uh whatever you want to do but yeah that's it here's the uh back armor now this should actually be incredibly simple what i learned the last time i armored some of these motorcycle pads is that having articulation on every single one of these pads is kind of overkill i personally am a human i don't discriminate against roly polies but this armor is going to be made for humans and typically you don't see human beings bending their spines past like 45 degrees maybe so instead of doing plates on every single one of these things i'm going to do like three big plates right here i probably could get away with two but i think three would look cooler and then like one down here on the twerking section it's really all we need to know for now let's do this all right i will first split them up to make this easier to work with move this aside and i want this first big plate to connect to this big plate right here but i want it to actually reach up and cover up here too it'll reach all the way down past this one and halfway to this one the next plate will start underneath that one and cover up all the way down here and then the last one will just go over here and then obviously this one just attaches there so first measurement is from here to here which is going to be eh, eight and a half inches draw that here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll split the last inch and a half. Three quarter inches on both sides. All right, and from this point, it has to reach, what the heck? It has to reach up two and a half inches from the center. One, two, three, three and a half, four inches across, 10 and a half inches at this bottom corner. I hope we have enough paper here. So four and a half inches down, five and a quarter inches from both sides. And another two and a half inches down and seven inches across, so three and a half from both sides. All right, connect all these ends. And we got our first plate, so I'll mark this number one. And we're gonna do the exact same process all the way down. All right, so we've got the shapes drawn out. I did notice a little bit of a problem here. I don't have enough of this new tread plate to do uh, the fourth plate, the twerking plate. I don't want to leave this build unfinished tonight, uh, so I'll probably just cut something stupid out of this thing. This is some leftover stuff from the helmet that I made. But yeah, I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and cut these things out. Thank you. 
All right, now before I start cutting these things out, I'm going to clean up this thing a little bit. I've had it sitting around for quite some time. I thought I might need an extra plate when I made my helmet for the first time, so that gives you an idea of how long it's been. I'm gonna use my angle grinder and like a wire brush or something. Right, I'm actually gonna use a flap disc. This is basically a disc made of a whole bunch of sheets of sandpaper stacked on each other. That's actually taken off a little more material than I would like. I think I'm gonna swap it out for a wire brush after all. All right, I got all the rust off. This is just mill scale. That's fine to just be painted over. Nah, it'll bug me if I leave it like that. Eh, it's not that bad. It was just a little bit of rust up there, but you actually can just leave it like this. So we'll do the stencils on this side so we don't have to worry about all the bumps and stuff. I'm just gonna put a dot on all the corners. And if you're wondering why I'm doing it like this instead of like arranging these all in a weird pattern and trying to fit as many as I can on there to hopefully try to get that fourth one on the same plate, I'm doing this because I want the diamonds on the other side to line up pretty well. And if I do it all like that, they'll be all mixed up. So I'm just gonna do it this way. All right, now I mark all of the real lines. All right, now I'll put the cutting disc on here and I'll cut these out. Sailing through her atmosphere Steering through the Yearning for the clouds to clear Will she let me stay? Let
So this should go a little something like this. And... Nah, I don't wanna do that. If I'm gonna do it, I wanna do it right. Ah, I hate that. I don't wanna do this later, but it's like two o'clock in the morning. I can't really... Well, I guess I'll just finish this up right here. All right, so I have to fold a line right down the middle of it. So I'm gonna try something I've never tried before. Normally what I would do when I wanted to make a really long bend in sheet metal like this is I would have to score the metal from this side with like the angle grinder, which would cause a weak spot, which would allow me to bend it really straight right there. But the problem with that is after that, then I have to weld back over it because it's a weak spot. I don't really feel like doing any welding tonight. So what I am going to do is instead make the line on this side. And instead of cutting through the base metal, I'm just gonna cut into these little bumps. Because because the bumps reinforce the rest of it, it'll still create a slightly weak spot in the middle right there, but it won't weaken the base metal at all. So hopefully this works. It'll save me a lot of time if it does. I just have to make the lines down the middle. Mm, that's pretty cool. This channel is actually going to line up pretty well with the space in between the bumps, so I shouldn't have to do that much cutting at all. I think God is telling me I should be going to bed pretty soon. All right, let's do this. Now here's how I'm gonna do the bending. As you can see, this is a little bit too wide for the vise. So I'm gonna take a couple of pieces of angle iron, line it up here, clamp it down. Probably gonna have to go with a C-clamp. I think these are the only ones that'll probably squeeze hard enough to keep this together. All right, now from here, I can get a lot of good leverage from holding onto this thing. Could probably bend this with my hands. I wouldn't normally be able to do this. <clears throat> yeah. You really don't have to bend it much. It's a lot more than it looks. Once you put it on the armor, you'll see. But yeah, that whole cutting into the bumps worked really well. It's a really nice bend. All right, same procedure with the other ones. This one was just a little bit wider than the first one and it was already hurting my hand through the thing so I'm thinking this is gonna be a little bit too much to ask of these little gloves. A four pound cross pin should do the trick. I think that's it. All right, here's our plates looking good. Now let's drill our holes and get to work on attaching this to the motorcycle pads. All right, I'm gonna use the paper as a guide first. Now I'll hold the sharpie on the dots until it soaks through and marks the steel. Actually, you know what? I gotta do it on this side. It's way too hard trying to keep the drill bit centered when you're like drilling on the edge of one of these bumps. All right, now drill them out. Now before I attach them, I'm going to paint them up. First I'm going to do the inner coat to prevent it from rusting any further. It's not going to be visible, so obviously it doesn't matter what color it is, so I'm just going to do some clear. Now 
I'm gonna go put this footage on my laptop while I let that dry. Flip them over, do the real paint job. Finally, a protective clear coat. I'll wave a McDonald's breakfast over it for good luck. I actually went to McDonald's trying to get two jalapeno McChickens and uh, they were only serving breakfast because it's like 5 a.m. But hey, I've got an excuse. Oh my gosh, I look like crap. Nah, because I'm going to be uh, staying up all night when I drive to Toronto. I guess I can technically say that I'm like training to stay up all night right now. Basically, I'm hecking up my sleep schedule so that I'll be able to stay up all night when I drive to Toronto. See you in the morning when the stuff's dry. All right, so it is the current day, which means that I was able to go out and buy some more tread plate. And after taking the measurements of the twerking part on the armor, I've actually realized that it's the exact same as the middle plate or plate number two. So I can actually just reuse this stencil. All right, now since the plates are layered on each other, we're gonna start low and go up. The twerking plate actually doesn't have anything on top of it. I've got it over there drying right now, but I'm gonna start marking out where I have to drill here. I'm gonna use these silver Sharpies that I got in the last alpha male. Thank you very much. The silver will show up on the motorcycle pads a lot better than the black one would see all right we got to be really careful because this mesh part on the bottom gets caught on the drill bits really easily so we just want to drill through the plastic and for the mesh on the bottom we'll poke through it with an exacto knife All right, now to attach the plates, I just take a rivet, put a washer on it, put it through the hole, clamp that up there. It doesn't matter if it scratches it, it'll give it some character. And pop the rivet. Same story. All right, now that is not going anywhere. We're just gonna continue that process all the way up. I'm gonna place the little Velcro things. Reconnect the buckles. And there it is. I can't really see it that well from here, but I feel like it looks pretty cool. Oh, I can kind of see. Eh, I can see it a little bit. It kind of reminds me of the uh, dragon plate from Skyrim. I definitely like the look of having the one giant plate on the back though. It just looks like super solid. Look at those freaking bags under my eyes. And they're only getting worse, guys. I've got a whole entire night of driving ahead of me, but in the morning, I'm gonna be chilling with James the Hacksmith and Omar. So while my body is deteriorating, it's a price I'm willing to pay. Anyways, guys, I think this turned out cool as heck. I hope you guys do too. As much as I'm looking forward to the stuff that we're gonna do in Canada, I am really looking forward to getting back and getting back to work on these videos. I just recently remembered how much fun it really is to be making these videos. So, you know, I probably said this a million times already, but you know, I'm sorry about how how my upload schedule hasn't been all that good, but I hope you guys can see that that's gonna be changing. Anyways, guys, that's about all I got for today, so thank you all very much for watching. And thanks again for the whitelist if you decided to. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll, I'll talk, talk to you later. later. Bye.